Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the War of 1812. And this is a war in 1812 that was fought between America and England. James Madison of the Democratic Republicans Party supported the war. So this was a war between America and England. Uh, this is after the Revolutionary War. And some of the causes was British interference with American shipping. Uh, they were attacking and sinking boats, and this disrupted trade with Europe. So it was hard for the United States to trade because Britain kept interfering. Uh, there was also the British imprisonment of U.S. sellers. So the British would take over U.S. boats, and they would take some of the sellers as prisoners, make them work. And the Americans' desire for Western expansionism often interfered with British expansion. So as more and more colonists start settling west, uh, British uh, also has people that are settling west, and this is starting to cause conflict. And Britain encouraged Indian tribes to attack settlers. America wins the war, but Britain did cause a lot of damage and even burned down the White House. So this is a picture of the White House. The British forces got there and they burned down. Uh, they burned it down. But uh, the Americans, they did win. Uh, next, we're going to go into political parties. This was also on our last unit, but we'll go into a little bit more now. And the first two political parties emerged in the late 1790s at the end of George Washington's presidency. George Washington was the first president. Uh, he wasn't necessarily part of a political party, but at the end of his presidency, that's when parties started to form. And at this time, there was two political parties. There was the Federalists. They were led by Adams and Hamilton. They believed in a strong national government with some powers to the states. They also wanted a commercial economy, and they were supported by bankers and businessmen in the Northeast. Whereas the Democratic Republicans were led by Jefferson and Madison. They wanted a weak national government and strong state governments. They, had, they believed in an agricultural economy, and they were supported by farmers, artisans, front, and frontier settlers in the South. And this leads to the election of 1800, and John Adams, who is a Federalist, lost to Thomas Jefferson, who is a Democratic Republican. Uh, Thomas Jefferson was the first president to not be a Federalist. So this was the first time that power went from the Federalist to Democratic Republicans, and it was uh, peaceful, there was no wars, and it was just an election. People with different ideas won. Uh, the Federalists, they opposed James Madison and his resolution to the War of 1812, so they did not support the War of 1812. In fact, the Federalists met at the Hartford Connection and discussed succession, and that means leaving the United States. So the Federalists, uh, they were so mad about the War of 1812, they thought that they were thinking about leaving the United States, uh, starting their own uh, country even. Uh, following the war, uh, which is 18, War of 1812, Federalists were viewed as unpatriotic and treasonous. This led to the demise, which means end of the party. So after the War of 1812, nobody liked the Federalists anymore, and it was the end of that political party. It doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it was over after the War of 1812. And now the impact of the War of 1812. Thousands of enslaved African Americans departed to join British forces. Uh, if you were a slave, I mean, why would you want to stay? A lot of them, they left and they tried to join the British forces to fight uh, fight against the Americans. Uh, this led to an enhanced American efforts to prevent future invasions. For instance, Fort Monroe was built to present, prevent future invasions. And Fort Monroe is just a military base, but it was to protect uh, Washington, D.C. in case it ever came under attack again. And a market revolution emerged, transforming the American economy. And many public works improvements were funded by tariffs, which are taxes, through the American system. And public works are things like roads and trains. Uh, so the American government was getting money through tariffs. And there were several improvements following the War of 1812, and these included transporta transportation improvements with canals and railroads. Uh, canals are man-made waterways, so they look like a river, but humans actually built them, and boats can go on them. And then railroads. You guys have seen trains before, uh, made transportation easier. If you grow stuff in the Midwest, uh, it's easy to ship it now. There was agricultural improvements with the cotton gin and mechanical reaper. The cotton gin removes seeds from cotton 
and the mechanical reaper is good for uh, grain farmers use it to quickly cut down stuff there was industrial innovations including textile mills it was very easy to make clothes now because of this and there was communication improvements including the telegraph uh, the telegraph was sort of like old-fashioned text messaging there was no telephones back then uh, people had a telegraph and they would push these buttons and letters would come out somebody had to read it and you were able to send messages across the country with that. It was very helpful. All right, if you guys have any questions, let me know.